Well, hello everybody. Uh, this afternoon we'll, we'll have an MJ and update by Neil Williams. I will please ask you that if you want to speak, to ask for the microphone. Yeah, uh, Neil will have it, so you will have to ask Neil. And if possible, say your name and look at the camera. And uh, well, I uh, hope you enjoyed. Neil? Thanks. Sorry about the, uh, the side of the presentation there, but I've got a few problems with the laptop. It's just going to cut off the last couple of words, but we should be okay. So we're looking, first of all, at what MDebian can actually provide. As the embedded Debian project, we're trying to bring Debian to much smaller devices, much smaller systems. Not necessarily low resource units, we're not, not necessarily looking to wind back the clock and do things that simply can't run modern code. We're just trying to make the code itself a lot smaller. We are ready to make a more or less simultaneous release with Lenny, using Lenny packages across both of ourselves and reducing the size. So that's on target. Uh, and we are actually in sync currently with Debian Unstable, and we'll be migrating those down to MDebian testing and then into MDebian Stable. So it will be very much like the kind of systems you normally uh, expect to find. Then the actual tools that you use both to prepare root file systems, to uh, customize particular packages, or to build whole new package sets for your own architectures or requirements and customize everything from there. They're all in Lenny. There will be updates because they're very new, so they're not necessarily bug free in Lenny, but they are working. And the, the distribution itself will not be a typical Debian uh, distro. In, for starters, we'll be doing the things on tangle handouts like that, if anything at all. Um, there'll be no kernels necessarily provided within MDebian, although we'll provide more support if we can for the kernels that you need. Typically, typically because the Debian stock kernels are simply be too big. Uh, you want to sort of uh, reduce file size as much as possible in all areas, so the kernel is just one. Uh, the kernel modules is another. You really want to customize the modules that you're actually going to install. Even if you build them, you don't necessarily want them all there. And the, the big emphasis with MDebian is that, whereas Debian allows you to customize the package selection, this one really is allowing you full control of the package selection and allowing you to customize the packages themselves uh, to get down to the really small sizes. We have got more work going on to make things even smaller and to, to spread the net wider. As I said there, ARMEL is the natural uh, successor. We're building ARM packages at the moment because when we started MDebian and this particular method, the ARMEL port wasn't ready. So we started with ARM um, and it can fairly smoothly, I hope, migrate to ARMEL, um, and then sort of native build support, uh, trying to make sure you've got a clean difference between the cross build and, the, and a native small MDebian build for i386. The main stay for what we're trying to do is cut out some of the dependencies. A lot of what we're doing is switching something in, in that in Debian says enable some function in a library, we'll change that to disable unless we've actually got a reason to use it. That's something that's going to be ongoing. It's fairly small scale at the moment, but as we've got a working system, we've got working people uh, helping out with testing, then we're going to increase the number of uh, functions and things that are disabled, again, to drop dependencies and therefore drop final installation size. We don't use Perl. We don't have any list of essential packages. Those are the two big differences with Debian, um, apart from the cross build. All dependencies are explicit, and they have to be done that way and make sure that you're actually following it right, right way through. All right. Again, work will be going on to um, provide tools to help and assist with that. Now that we've got a working system, we can actually work out what bits we can take out uh, rather than relying on the Debian dependencies, which can be a bit um, more than you actually need. And we remove huge amounts of documentation. I'm not going to cover TDEBs in this talk. That's a separate item, but yes, we are removing locales as well. It's a huge step. So, for example, um, OpenMoco, was yours 480 megabyte installed or something like that? Debian on, Debian on the OpenMoco? The base installs, I think, 400. Yeah. Okay, so that's it. Base installs 
Yeah. But that's with our with some of our progressive. Yeah. Yeah. Minimal installation was like 200 and extra. But well, we, then Debian, we got a full um, GNOME based or G GNOME part of the environment uh, GUI with an X server and your calendar and contacts and other things. And we're down to a 75 megabyte install uh, and basic system down to about 24 megabyte install. We're hoping to get the, the full GPE environment and the, the magic 64. What are you using instead of Perl shell? We are re implementing various of the essential Perl scripts in shell, yes. Uh, one or two might have to go in the C, uh, but I'm not that happy, so we're, we're okay with that. Uh, at the moment, Perl has been a big win on both sides. Um, just a little word on conventions. When I'm talking about build, I'm talking about the big thing on the, on the, the big desktop thing you've got sitting in the corner. Or when I'm talking about host, I'm talking about the thing you carry in your hand, the handheld. All right? We've got tool chains for i386 AMD64 for your builds. We build for ARM, ARMEL, and various other hosts as well. We've got a full range of compilers, and as soon as any releases, we're going to have a hard time, but we're going to have to add 4.4 to that, um, which should be fun. Um, we don't really support the cross-compiling on PowerPC anymore. That was my old laptop that I had in Edinburgh, and it really sort of struggled to build a toolchain for itself. So um, unless there's anybody who really, really wants uh, 4.3 or the upcoming 4.4 on PowerPC, then we're just going to leave it at 4.2. We are sticking to glibc. UC libc is not in Debian at the moment. It's going to be hopefully back in Debian sometime after Lenny. Uh, there's various copyright and licensing problems you've got to sort out first, but there is work going on for that. And there is outline support for UC libc already in the tools. Sir, can you outline the other alternatives? I, I've seen things like Diet Libsy, but I don't know how to evaluate them. We can't really, I can't really say much on that more. We haven't tested with anything except GC Libsy. We've got outline support for UC Libsy. Uh, with more people on the team, we might be able to look at some of the others as well. The, the tool chains recently, we've actually managed to get an auto builder for those as well. So we've got a, a build D that builds cross compilers. Uh, that's a big investment and it actually takes a huge amount of time um, and it's a difficult thing to get right because sometimes you end up with, uh, you build one tool chain and then one of the other tool chains becomes uninstallable because of the packages you've just built. And the tools we actually use, Dpackage Cross is what gives you your cross dependencies, it puts them in the right place so that the cross compiler can find ARM binaries on an AMD64 box. Apt Cross is what gets the ARM package and actually gives it a dpackage cross, and then Debian tools and the packages within it do all the rest. And those are in LED. Very recently as well, we've actually had another build D come online, which is a cross-building build D. So it's actually building our target <coughs> packages. Um, both of those auto builders are our own work. They're not actually based on SBuild at the moment, which we're going to work on that from there. They were both developed as a natural progression from the tools we already had. Uh, because both kinds of builds can take a long time and you want to leave them running unattended so it became a natural evolution of the tools to support uh, unattended building and therefore auto building. So the actual tools themselves that will be in Lenny, we have the support there not only to provide the tool chains but make sure they're installable and help you in the odd situation where those, those things can go wrong and you need to perhaps build a small tool chain for yourself. Again, actually getting hold of the cross um, dependency libraries and putting them in the right place where the compiler can find them. So with all these kinds of things, sometimes on a, if you're actually managing your own tool chain, they can all be hassle and the, the tools are taking those away. We do need a fair number of Debian patches at the moment. Work is going on to put all of those patches into the Debian packages. There's a uh, a lot of work to get Deb Helper on our side. Um, and then once that's done, a lot of patches will disappear. Um, and we can actually work on the, the few problems we've got left where packages that we need don't actually cross build direct from Debian to get those incrementally improved in, in Debian. And just ma long, long term mass profiling to facilitate that and get the patches available to the 
development maintainers. Now, as said, we actually try to support as much customization as possible. We not only do that by giving you full control of what package you, so you, you select and taking essential out of, out of the equation on that, but actually uh, providing extra patches on top of the cross builds to customize how you, how you want your particular package to be built. So you could disable something that we haven't uh, taken out yet. Uh, it's it's going to be tricky at this stage because we've still got so many patches of our own, but that's going to become more and more useful as we get more and more patches included into Debian upstream. And then the tools themselves take the final stage. You have a repository either on your local machine or on some mirror somewhere, uh, or you can use our own in Debian uh, repository for ARM packages, and you specify your customizations if you want them. You add in a couple of extra dependencies if you need those, and you build a root file system, fits alongside your kernel and your kernel modules, and you install it on your device in your way. That um, system uses the build system to do as much of the work as possible. So only the final stage of the actual installation needs to be done on the device. It's, it's, it's one stage on from the normal debootstrap forum type procedure. So the package we've got, we base ourselves on BusyBox to get rid of core utils and to get rid of Perl. We use a fairly large config for BusyBox. We try and use as much of it as we can. We've got then the binary packages working up to the full X server, GTK plus two, and the GPARP environment, and touch screen support. I was hoping, hence the title of, title of the original talk, to demonstrate the touch screen support with the Balloon 3. But yesterday it developed a hardware error, and we had a few problems with the driver, and now the y-axis works, but the x-axis is always the same. <laughs> Isn't very handy. We're going to work on that when we get back. So the actual auto builder, all the cross-building logs now are available online, uh, and they go, they, have, they go back over a, a, quite a reasonable period of history, but they'll be kept up to date as the auto builder works, so you can always tell what the difference is between the, the cross-build and the native build, and you compare and find, oh, hang on, you're doing something different there. All right? So you can look at your own packages and find out what they're doing with them. That's the root file system part from the, from, from the tools. We're using the pre-built packages, put them together with Debootstrap to give you the, uh, the pre-configured as much as we can. Now, this has been covered in another, in another talk, with Zach's talk about EDOS DevCheck. We're using EDOS DevCheck a lot. It is a prerequisite for upload to the, to the archive. Nothing gets into the archive unless EDOS DevCheck has first cleared it, and if there's any error, it has been manually uh, reset. So we're using that to make sure that the packages that are going into even an MDebian unstable are always installable. And we have ongoing checks every time uh, the upload is go goes up, and, uh, and even between uploads as well, to make sure that uh, the package sets that we, we, we offer are installable. It does not mean that the whole archive is installable. Uh, to use that terminology, we're not, we are non-trimmed, substantially non-trimmed, about 50% non-trimmed, uh, <laughs> mainly because you're not going to want debug packages on that kind of device, you're not going to want dev packages on that kind of device, you're not going to need auto make or all the other stuff that you would have typically on a Debian install. So we don't necessarily care whether those packages are installable or not. They're there because you built the source package a lot of them are there, uh, and the dev just get built automatically. It's easier to let the dev be built than to take it out afterwards, which is something we might want to work on. You never know. And that's where the machine variant customization comes in again. Okay, e each stage we offer as much customization as we can, and if you need anything else changed, any other custom uh, changes anywhere through the process, from the initial package selection to the cross build, through the repository, and up through the actual. Uh, root file system, just ask and we'll, we'll work on the, the tools to make it possible to support the other alternatives. And developer time is what limits us to GPE. I'm the maintainer for most of the GPE packages in Debian. It was a natural thing for me to work on. That's the kind of thing I'm interested in myself because I want a, a PDA type environment. But there are lots of other packages out there. We are working with the open local people to try and get their packages into MDebian. 
so that you could actually have a much smaller installation once all that work cross builds. It's going to take some time, but you know, once it's there, you can use it. Um, and the, the customization allows you to pick and choose whatever you want from the archive. So how you actually get onto the machine, Deboot Sabadour is a great bit of software. It does a lot of the dependency reconciliation that we need. It handles uh, the actual preparation and, and unpacking of the archives. Uh, it helps us a lot in that way. But you could use another back end if you wanted to. Um, we don't use the full people start forum because that would require a cross compiler uh, to actually prepare the root file system. We've separated out the packages so you can build a root file system without needing a tool chain. So you've got all pre-built packages. If you want them as we've done them, you can have a root file system and change and change whichever selection you want. So we've devised um, an unpack method, which is not quite the same as dpackage unpack because dpackage unpack runs the uh, maintainer scripts. And you'll be running these on your build system. And it'll try to run post binaries and go to die, crash. Well, so we have to work around that. We, have, we unpack to the point where the maintainer scripts are available to the system after we've installed it. There are no um, dot devs left on the system when you actually install it. All, everything's actually been put in the right place. And then when you actually run the, um, when you copy it over, you unpack the tarball. And the one thing you run then is dpackage configure on the actual machine. That's the only process that then runs on the device itself prior to the reboot. The machine variant customization is organized via defaults. So you can have a, um, just a user string for whatever you want as your main machine description and a variant for all subtypes of that. So I would use Balloon 3 for the machine name and then have BusyBox GPE or just GDK for the variants and just changing the, the various package select. And you can literally select anything that will actually install. We don't put any barriers in the way. Essential's gone. You don't have to worry about anything that is normally on a Debian system. Priorities are not enforced. They're still in the control file, but that's just because the repository needs. Uh, you can literally have whatever you can, you can get that works. And that's a rough indication there. The system that's actually running on this balloon here, it's a full GPE GUI. As I said, it's got contacts and um, um, Picture gallery, what else has it got on it? Oh yeah, to do the to do list, time tracker, uh, configuration uploads, alarm clock, calendar, image viewer, text editor, and that fits in it under seventy five megabyte. I'll hand this around so you can actually have a chance to to see some of the information uh, of the actual development board we're using. But by no means is that the only board you can use. We can we'll support any board you can find. Get working. Kernel. Brings me on to the kernels. What we're actually going to release, as I said, is just the pre-built binaries. We're not going to go into um, any of the particular kernels. You will need to work that out for yourselves. Um, and we're currently not actually doing the full DI setup. It is going to be possible, I hope. Um, hopefully, there'll be some work doing Extremadura in September to actually see if we can get a proper uh, DI setup. It would be nice to have DI just to do the final stage. Uh, we won't need any, we won't need any of the first lot where the package is actually or the DI is actually doing the installation. We just need it to run the package configure, then set the root password, uh, set up a user, and reboot. But it, it would be nice to do that in a relatively standard interface rather than having to do every device in a customized, specialized way. So because you're, you're building a variant of Debian instead of some other random operating system, yeah. presumably there are Debian versions of all of the binaries that the, the maintainer scripts are potentially going to call on, right? Why can't you just run those inside of a troot and pretend that you're on the device? We have tried that. It didn't get the results we wanted. Um, it's... You would have to run that on um, an ARM CH route to get the real results. So you then start thinking, because if you run the 
maintain the scripts on, in an AMD64 CH route, you're going to get the wrong results in some cases, not necessarily all of them. Um, have, you, have you tried key a move? We cross build everything. We're not actually using emulators at this stage. We would like to stick with cross building the whole lot, to stick with the Debian idea that you can build the whole lot from source. Um, and not necessarily relying on emulator, emulators to do that. But for the maintainer scripts, I mean, is it's not it's not actually a problem. You do so much of the work beforehand before you actually create the tarball. The package configurate really doesn't take that much time. I was actually going to demonstrate it on the device. Um, I might do that later on. The first time. So that's what we're looking at there. It just needs to be unpacked as a tarball. So that's the process for the balloon three. That's actually what we would normally do. So there's bootloader support for a different kernel on the device. You boot into that, you mount the USB stick, you copy over the kernel image, untar it, see it's root, and done. What we need to work on uh, around the time of the release and after the release are these two chain build time issues and the installation problems that can happen from those. That's what we're hoping to get done part of that in uh, Extremadura. It should make things a lot easier if we can actually manage those better. Probably means a second machine to do simultaneous builds for i386 and AMD64, the main uh, ones in there. To get under that magic 64 megabytes, we need to work with the GLBC maintainers to strip out the GCONV libraries and work out how to handle those sanely so that you don't have too many uh, displays that have just blank squares all over the place, um, and to work out some way of handling your time zone data uh, in a sane way so you don't have to worry about time zones in 1894 or whatever. Uh, as I said, the ARMYL support is one of the other big issues we've got to try and I'll take some time. This has come together fairly quickly and a fairly piecemeal way because it's very difficult to plan your way from GWC to GTK. And then really starting off on a whole new port and a whole new cross build, it's actually very difficult to work out, well, which library do I do next? And you end up building a lot of libraries and then come to a dead end and think, actually, I don't need that bit. I need that bit over there. Um, so there are quite a lot of packages in the archive. Uh, we've got 243 source packages, 700 binaries, and 1,700 TDEVs. Um, and there's the, there will need to be a, a full-scale code, code audit to work out which bits we still need, which bits are actually going to be cut down, all the rest of that. And that will be fed in then to the long-term mass bug filing to get all the patches put into Debian as soon as we can. We want to support, want, we want to work with OpenMoco, we want to work with the, the kind of devices they've got because it would be easier for everybody if there are more devices around. One of those things is Python support. It does cross-build in Open Embedded, so it should cross-build eventually in Debian. It's just a matter of working out what patches it needs to the Debian stuff to allow the upstream stuff to do what it couldn't do anyway. It's surprisingly common that the Debian rules and the Debian files and, uh, actually get in the way of cross-building, when the upstream package cross-builds fine. <laughs> um, that Debian installer integration, that's one of the other things we've been hoping to work on in Extremadura to, um, to make sure that we do as little as possible on the actual device. That's for later on, perhaps if we want to support really small devices like booters and things like that, you're going to have to do everything you can on the build machine as little as you can on the host. But then you've got smaller package sets, or so deep package configuration will take less time even though it's a, small, a slower device. Now, the long-term mass bug filing has been going on for a while. There are bugs that have been open for that for over six months. And once then he's out of the way, I'm going to do some NMUs. So that's fair enough, I think. <laughs> I've waited long enough. So I'm going to, <laughs> I'm going to be uploading some of those and actually uh, implementing the, the cross-build support. All right, it's all been tested as to have no effect on the Debian package itself and to have no effect on the Debian build. It's all conditional on there being a, a request to cross-compile it. That's the only time that the, uh, the patch comes into, into effect. 
the other issue we need to sort out is I386 support, um, building in a 32-bit CH root on that AMD64, uh, essentially a native build. At the moment, some of the patches, some of the methods we're using, um, they are a bit too hard, or a bit too far optimized for cross-building, and we need to sort of back off a little bit in some areas and allow a native build to carry on. That ties in nicely then with the uh, mass, mass bug filing and the NMUs to make sure we're getting this balance right between not interfering with the native build and allowing the cross build to work as we need it to. And then YAFS is the file system we use on Bloom, waiting for um, mainline support in the kernel, but uh, that depends on Wookiee having more time. Uh, and we actually need to make sure that that file system can actually do what it needs to do, which is checkpointing, so that you, when you reboot, it doesn't have to spend time checking the YAFS file system. Uh, so that's, that's, a, that's an issue at the moment that the, when you boot the board, it takes longer than it should do to start up. Like how long? Oh, it only takes an extra 15, 25 seconds for the, uh, but it, that's, that's enough in, in, in terms of a device like that to actually be a problem. So yes, it, that's why I put it there because we need to fix it. Um, that's a basic, outline of how you actually use the tools. That'll be how you use the tools in, in Lenny or in, in, uh, or in Unstable. So your M setup is just telling you what you need to change to have a tool chain there in the first place. Then it goes ahead and installs it for you. M source is a wrapper for apt get source. It gets the package, unpacks it, applies our patches, and it put, it puts you in there ready to start to cross build. M recent goes through the, the cross builds that you've done passes them through, looks for the dot .changes files for the ones that are actually built successfully, passes them to EDOS dev check, checks that they're actually installable, runs them against Lintian. Now we've got Lintian support in mDebian and we, we treat all Lintian errors as fatal. Even Lintian warnings are fatal. So we only check the, the tests we need, We're trying to get more support in Lintian to do only that. Um, but there are things like this is an ARM package and it contains x 64 binaries. That is simply going to break everything. So we have to make sure that, that kind of Lintian t check is fatal, breaks the build, and it stops. For actually preparing the, the bug reports, we've got um, uh, support in the tools again to mbug prepare. It unpacks two side-by-side uh, -side directories, one with the Debian, one with our patches are on top as well and you can use nice little tools like meld to show the difference between the two and to make sure you get the right diffs into the Debian package, test it, make sure it builds natively, and carry on from there, and then submit the report from that. So what, we've, what have we got in this GPE environment? We're basing on Matchbox, which has had a fairly large rewrite since I last saw it on Familiar. So <laughs> it doesn't look the same anymore, but it does work quite nicely. And you've got the, the tools I've been describing already. So we're going to add games and console uh, and, um, terminal emulators and calculator, image viewer, all that kind of stuff. The touchscreen support is what I've been working on at uh, DevConf 8. And up until about 48 hours ago, it was working fine. <laughs> and certainly, we have packages already for Bluetooth and audio support. That's all there. If you've got the hardware on the machine, it'll work. Now, I've got um, an example board at the front here. There's a box going around with the various other details of what the device can support. Um, if you've got any questions on what the device can do, and I'm connected into it on there. It's a fairly simple arrangement. You've got USB networking, and then going through so you can actually Query the internet through the laptop. Uh, this particular device doesn't have a battery, so I can't actually put it around your wall. So if you want to see it, you've got to come up here. <laughs> um, but you can see that it's, it's, it's got all the, the basic features you would want. Um, and when the power light comes back on, you can actually 
see the, the screen as well. So if we kill X. I'm only having to do it this way because the touch screen uh, support has failed. Otherwise, I'd be able to tap the screen and get it up for you. So you, sh you yeah. should see there, it's actually doing the touch screen support and trying to load it up from there. This comes up with X on there. So that's there for people to have a look at. When are there are any questions now? Where, where have we got to? What are the pros and cons of the different flash file systems available out there? I mean, you, everybody used to use JFFS too, and now you're using YAFs. You're using you're using um, JFS two for OpenMoco, aren't you? Um, to be honest, a lot of that sort of question, those kind of questions, I would wish would have gone to Wookie, but he hasn't been able to get to you for DevConf eight. Um, my work is almost exclusively on the software side and the cross building and the tool sets. So hardware questions, I start to look at someone else. <laughs> Do you know what part? I only have a vague knowledge of the differences between the two. Um, Yavis is ground designed up for. NAND file systems only, if I remember correctly, um, and is designed to boot much faster. So before JFFS2 would have had the checks, um, not checks, I mean the, the logging support, um, YAFIS didn't need to check everything when you started up. So for a large file system, gave you a big performance increase over that. I, I believe JFFS2 is caught up there and that their arguments, and the arguments to use YAFIS are minimalized a bit, but the, the plan is still to get Yafis into the mainline kernel and some work has been going on and doing that, but um, I have been involved in it. Thanks. The, the reason we're working with Yafis, I think, is because That's the company that actually work with the, the Bloom board. They're currently um, working on the, for, for Bloom 2. This is the Bloom 3 board, and it's going to be the next uh, production model. And that's the kind of devices they're actually supporting with that. And they've been, they've been, it's too loud. <laughs> they've been doing um, the Yafis work at, at Toby Church, and we're working with those from there. So that, I'm currently using the Apple on now. I don't see any particular reason why we wouldn't be able to use any of the other flash based file systems. Uh, and uh, as I said, the main problem we've got at the moment is that something in our setup is preventing the Apple from doing its main selling point, which is that checkpoint to stop the delays on reboot. How would you compare this to Open Embedded? <laughs> he says, looking straight at the Open Embedded guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, the biggest difference is that we are still Debian. It's still a derivative of Debian. All the Debian tools are there. You're not using I package or O package. You're using D package and apt get. Now, that's a big enough incentive that the Open Mocha people have done the same, and they've got Debian. Uh, as a bigger installation on the open Mocha device for those kinds of reasons. We're starting off with dpackage and apt-get. The other difference is that uh, we have got this intermediate stage with the repository, and you don't have to go in and have to build any packages necessarily. You can actually just build a root file system, get your kernel and your kernel modules, go ahead and install and give it a try. And if the, you, you can change the package set and you can work with that. Once you actually need to start adapting the package themselves, that's when you need the cross-building tool chain. Just, just a couple of points in addition to the advantages <coughs> having worked with Open Embedded as well. Um, one is that you, while we retain glibc, you're still able to copy across a binary from a Debian box um, oh, yes. of the same architecture. So you can make use of the ARM or the ARM EL port if that's the box you're running on and copy it straight across. Um, the other thing is that mDebian is allowed to leverage the 
um, release structure of Debian and the security updates of Debian, something which, um, in my experience, Open Embedded haven't been quite so good about doing. Um, so you can basically rebuild automatically from the updates that are done in Debian and get those into mDebian automatically. Yeah. Thanks. That was something I did want to mention, actually, that um, I should have done a slide on that. You can mix mDebian and Debian on the same system. You have to be a little bit careful if we start playing around with too many dependencies, then that will become a little more difficult. Um, but generally, there isn't anything inherently blocking you from just adding a Debian mirror to your app sources list on that device and getting some ARM binaries on top. If you've got the space, because they'll be bigger than what we would provide, there's the space on the device and you can satisfy the rest of the dependencies, you can go ahead. And there is support even in Debian, there's been support for years and years, to use things like equivs to build a sort of false package if there is a dependency like something like add user, which in Debian is Perl, but in mDebian it's Busybox. So you could, uh, the functionality is there, you don't have to uh, change the package to work with that, you just need to trick the package into allowing you to install something that they thinks he can't. So you just provide a false package and away you go. So yeah, that's, that's the, that is a big advantage. We can actually just fold into Debian. Well, I had to work with um, Gamsic motherboards at uh, the beginning of the year and uh, was using Open Embedded because it was Gamsic's uh, recommends. Um, and I saw they had two branches. Um, you can build uh, Open Embedded in two ways with Microsoft C libc and with Helipsy. And when the last time I checked, last time about two months ago, uh, they were uh, telling people not to use Microsoft C libc because they had a lot of problems with it. Uh, do you think you will, uh, will control real problems you see, well, because you were suggesting to port uh, to do things with Microsoft libc do you think you will uh, encounter problems using that, or it's just? I don't think so, because the Debian maintainers of UC libc are actually working are almost as part of the upstream for UC libc now. So we've got a better relationship with UC libc, um, and we can get the updates straight into Debian and therefore straight into M Debian. So we should be should be okay to, but it is a big issue because. It's not just the copyright problems with UC libc. It is that it's it's the whole issue of how you manage it, um, and you have to link everything against UC libc, and you can't necessarily then mix. You lose the the the, the advantage of uh, bringing in Debian packages because they're going to want glibc, and you're going to be potentially causing crashes because it comes across UC libc and things. It hasn't got half the function they need. Um, so all those kinds of things can potentially trip you up once you actually start with UC libc. So it's it's a big step, um, and you know we'll we'll have to see how we go on with the, the actual support. But we, we've got the infrastructure within Debian to cope with that kind of thing generally um, quite well. Anybody fancy in the world having a look at the balloon? Okay. You mentioned a couple of times that uh, the reward time is rather long, longish, <coughs> because it's 15 to 20 seconds. Uh, do you reboot it uh, very often uh, or just for testing? It's been, it, it's in testing that particular device all the time, so I'm, I'm constantly sort of putting new root file on onto it and testing the installer and all that kind of stuff. Um, once this problem with checkpointing on YAFs is fixed, then the actual boot time would be far more respectable. Um, I have been able to sort of work with it in its proper checkpointing mode, um, and the boot there is half the time, it's cut by half, so it's a lot better. Um, but these particular devices, the way they're going to be used um, for, with this particular company, the boot time isn't that much of an issue. Different devices, different boards, you may well get much faster boot times. You may well be optimized in different ways. Yeah, this has actually got quite a large file system on it as well. So when the checkpoint in, 
doesn't happen. It take, uh, takes longer than it might otherwise. Because um, this is, uh, this has got enough space, this particular Bloom 3, it's got enough space to run a normal Debian install. I'm using it for mDebian so we can work on much smaller devices that haven't got that kind of luxury. Hello. Um, could you elaborate a little bit more on what would be a roadmap to include uh, microlibc support? Because it's not only about creating the tool chains that support microlibc, but as well you need to customize a very build option because um, microlibc lacks uh, crucial functionalities for many packages like icon and stuff like that. So you would need to change several rules files for packages. Yeah. That's going to be another part of that. Um, I'm hoping, again, the, the maintainer who's going to be looking after UC libc and Debian is also the guy who had the idea for these dpackage variants, dpackage classes, that kind of functionality in dpackage. So that once we've got more patches from mDebian into Debian upstream after Lenny, then you can have this whole um, variety of configurations passed on to dpackage so you can have these options within Debian rules to enable something or, de or disable something based on the variant you're using. And then it's a, a, um, a distribution-wide uh, variation across the board. You can just set a, a string of, of uh, configuration options and it will pass those across to all packages across the board. So that's, uh, that's something we need to work on um, to try and get that thing. And it is, it is going to be part of uh, what we need to work with UC libc. So it's going to take us a while. Um, any volunteers? <laughs> uh, what about architectures that aren't currently supported by Debian, like Codefire? Um, do you think it would be possible to support them? Difficult. We are uh, embed. It is embedded Debian. We are uh, reliant on Debian and the architecture support within Debian. Okay, we've got the main the DDs to um, get those kind of changes into Debian if if there is the demand to do so. Um, but we need that kind of precursor. It does need to be in typically Debian D package before we can really use it. We actually did get some cold fire boards a few years ago um, from Freescale to make the M6CK port support uh, cold fire. Uh, fortunately, we haven't really reached any point with that yet. It would only be cold fire v4e anyway because the regular, the other cold fires don't have an MMU and you cannot run a full Debian on that one. Um, but at this point, probably that's not going to change very soon. Uh, partially also because we are going to be kicked out of Debian, as you probably know now. <laughs> um, but we have a meeting in, uh, for the MCSK developers in, at the end of this month, and we'll probably discuss that then, what we'll do, do about that. But for now, cold fire is not going to, the status about them is not going to change very soon. So that's another one for the, for the long to-do list. Yeah. Uh, why is it so crucial to have Debian support for that architecture enabled to be able to build within Debian a tool chain for that com uh, architecture and cross build for that architecture? There are several packages that will be need patches, but it should be uh, sensible to accept them uh, for the normal package as long as they're non intrusive packages, patches. There's two stages to that. We have got, I showed you that dpackage cross, which is a package that can extend dpackage for extra cost building functionality. We do have support within that to allow a little bit of tweaking so that you can get a head start. But at the end of the day, when you're actually trying to install the system, you're gonna want the proper Debian uh, dpackage to understand what kind of archives it's handling and apps and everything else from there. So if they come along at some point and say unknown architecture, you're gonna be in trouble. Uh, so we, we need at least the package to support that particular string yeah. described in the architecture. But, but we don't necessarily, we, we can work around the rest, um, but it, it can take a surprising length of time to actually get uh, sort of new architectures listed in, in D package. Um, 
So hopefully we'll get UC libc, but that's a different issue again. That's a whole new set of architecture strings with dpackage. Um, but dpackage has got a lot of work on other things, so it's it can be sort of queuing things up a bit. We should be okay. Just takes just takes time. <laughs> One last question. I, I think I already know the answer, but uh, um, has anyone uh, popped it up and said, hey, what about Qtopia? I'm probably going to pass this over to Jan in a minute. <laughs> um, the Qtopia stuff, there's no. Uh, Qtopia is one block, isn't it? So the, there isn't a Qtopia in Debian for us to, to bring down and use. The Qt stuff, um, well, maybe someone will find the time to work with small versions of Qt4 and actually prepare a, um, a package set from that that we can build. Because the GPE stuff that I show you, yes, is GNOME-based, but it isn't GNOME. <laughs> you won't fit GNOME on a device like that, um, or, it's, or the device we're targeting. These are bespoke applications designed for small screens and for handhelds. They have extra little functionality to make sure you can use certain buttons and um, touch screens, uh, sort of understanding and that kind of stuff. So you need um, different packages. You won't be able to just take a chunk of KDE and say cross build that and stick it on the device. Um, I'm not sure how much work is going on on that. Uh, um, currently, <coughs> As soon as it's in Debian, then we can we can have a go. But um, it's it's going to what we really need are more people to do that kind of work, so that we can come along and actually take some of the burden off me, so that I don't have to deal with 700 packages. Yeah, I'm working on the, yeah. on Qtopia as well, and with a co with a group of people. Yeah. So, well, if, if as you're actually getting these packages into Debian, if you're looking at anything. If you're looking at adding any package to Debian that actually has an embedded application and embedded usage, come to the Debian embedded mailing list. Ask us what you need to have in Debian, you know, Debian rules file, um, and what kind of cross-building support you want before you stick it up into new, preferably, so that then you've got the cross-building support from day one, um, and then you know, get a tool chain, install it, and test it, and see what, see what it builds. Another question is, um, uh, is one able to um, do porting uh, work uh, without one of these uh, Balloon 3? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, you, you can port, you can work with um, the packages. Uh, that's, only, that's really there for testing of the installation methods and to make sure that we got the, the checks right and the various um, um, setup <coughs> to make sure you've got the right files in the right places and the right sort of support. Uh, across the file system. Um, yeah, there, there probably will be changes when you go from one device to another, we can improve the tools. But yes, that is, uh, I did a lot of this uh, uh, MDebian work before I even had a balloon to work with. In fact, probably half of it was actually done without, uh, without a machine to even test it on. That's part of the reason for the code audit, because some of the packages were done such a long time ago that I actually need to go back and have another look. Hello again. Yeah. Um, I would like also to ask you how is the uh, tool chain generation works right now? Do you prepackage them for all variants you support, or is there a tool that would generate like a sequence of packages, stage one GCC compiler, headers, then stage two? It's a big you block. Need and it's a big block. You actually run uh, one script that controls a series of, of, uh, of other scripts. It's maintained by another member of the, of the MDebian team, and he does that uh, as, as a big, big block build. So he tries to build, um, he'll say, well, I'm going to do the AMD64 tool chains today, and he'll build each of the 12 cross compilers, or 10 cross compilers, or however many he needs to build, uh, in, at, at that one go. Because he's, he's watching the GCC version in Debian, 
and when it's updated, he has to do a whole new build across the board. That can take, at the moment, up to 24 hours. Are there plans to release uh, some simpler version of that script so any user can specify, like, I would like to build a cross-compiler on my system with my uh, <coughs> uh, host and uh, with that GNU triplet as output? Yes, MDebian Tools already supports that. It does have a little tool called mChain. Um, mChain is what also allows you to customize an existing tool chain to work with UC libc. Um, it's primarily designed for times when you can't install the, or there isn't a relevant MDebian tool chain available for you. And it's fairly crude in places. It, it, it is just trying to do the little bits to get the right source package to build it and see what happens. Um, uh, it does require you to have a little bit of debugging, if you like, as the build goes on. And it doesn't necessarily it isn't necessarily a, sort of a first-time user tool. We try and hide it away so that we leave you mostly with M setup that tries to get pre-built tool trains. And if you need M chain, then you need to come onto the on the mailing list. We'll see if we, we, we can help you through it. Thank you. I think that's about it. All right. The, the device is here. If you want to have a look at it, I'll um, I'll get the screen back on so you can actually see what's on there because it. One of these things is power sensitive, power's off. Um, thank you very much.